Hello, YouTube. There was a very interesting study conducted by Russian scientists in Antarctica not long ago. Of course, you won't find any mention in uh, the legacy media about this, but I want to bring it to your attention. I'll give you the available information, but it was a comprehensive study, and I think it's significant uh, to... Keep in mind what we're not being told, but maybe one day we'll find out. Nevertheless, here's what I have. For the first time, the scientific team of the St. Petersburg Federal Research Center of the Russian Academy of Sciences conducted a comprehensive study of 40 large and small lakes in various Antarctic locations, underwater video filming, collecting sediment samples, and measuring water parameters. The collected data will allow scientists to describe the mechanisms of uh, transformation at extremely low temperatures of compounds of biological origin, humic substances, which are a global reservoir of carbon. Let me give you a little bit more detail. Humic substances are a group of dark colored complex organic compounds formed from the decomposition of plant and animal matter over long periods. They are major uh, components of humus, the organic matter in soils, and also found in various environments like aquatic systems and geological deposits. The synthesis of humic substances slows down the processes of organic oxidation to greenhouse gases, which affects the climate. The press service of the St. Petersburg Institute of Physics and Technology of the Russian Academy of Sciences clarified. So they're using this, uh, uh, the, the climate change and uh, climate effects as a cover for the study. Antarctica is the coldest, driest, and windiest continent on Earth where temperatures can drop to record lows it serves as a natural laboratory for the study of climate change, glacial processes, and extreme forms of life. And the data obtained are of global importance for understanding the processes on the planet. Antarctic lakes are of great interest, which are often the main oasis of life on the continent, which makes them the most important objects for studying the transformation of organic material in extreme climatic conditions. Humic substances are complex organic compounds, a universal link in the chain of transportation of the remains of living organisms that inhabit Antarctica. Their synthesis, humification, in particular, slows down the formation of greenhouse gases. In addition, humic acids actively interact with natural minerals. Therefore, they play one of the key roles in bio-geochemical cycles of trace elements. We have conducted a comprehensive study of about 40 of the largest lakes, which are located in various physical and geographical conditions of Antarctica. Many of them have been investigated in such detail for the first time. As part of this work, measurements of water and ice parameters were carried out. The species composition of living organisms was determined, which provided information on the conditions of formation of humic substances, explained Artem Lapinkov, a junior researcher at the Laboratory of Geography and Hydrology of the St. Petersburg Institute of Physics and Technology of the Russian Academy of Sciences. The scientists explored three oases with different physical and geographical conditions in order to cover the maximum possible diversity of Antarctic lakes. The warmest, closest to the equator, Bellinshausen Station, is located on King George Island in South Shetland Islands archipelago. The lakes on the island are freed from ice cover in the summer and have depths up to 20 meters. In addition, lakes near the Novolazarevska Station, which is located in East Antarctica in the Schirmacher Oasis, explored. The lakes here are up to 50 meters deep. In the summer, many of them are opened from ice. The third location is the Russian field base, located on one of the most poorly studied areas 
of the coastal zone of West Antarctica. The lakes in the area of the station are covered with ice all year round. There are both salt and freshwater reservoirs. The depths do not exceed 5 meters. New data on lakes near the base made it possible to review the geographical status of the territory. So if earlier scientists believed that this land area was a non-attack, a rocky peak protruding from under the ice cover, then based on the information collected about the presence of lakes inhabited by aquatic bacterial communities, limnologists of St. Petersburg um, Institute from the Russian Academy of Sciences, together with scientists from the Arctic and Antarctic Research Institutes, were able to attribute it to low-lying coastal oases. In each lake, the researchers measured the physical chemical parameters of the water, the thickness of the ice, and selected and described samples of bottom sediments containing humic substances. In addition, uh, for the first time, the St. Petersburg specialists from the Academy of Sciences conducted detailed underwater landscape video recordings of reservoirs to map the distribution of underwater vegetation, a source of humic substances. <sighs> Who knows what else they videoed. The filming was carried out from a boat or from the ice cover. A backlit drifting camera that could rotate 360 degrees was lowered into the water. The conducted studies allowed us to visually assess the distribution areas and species composition of algae, mass vegetation, as well as the presence of bacterial films and benthic organisms. All of them are materials for the processes of humification. The new data we have collected in particular will allow us to better understand the mechanisms of lake influence on global climate change on Earth, including such important processes as the greenhouse effect, said Alina Guzeva, senior researcher at the Laboratory of Complex Problems of Limnology at the St. Petersburg Institute for Physics and Technology of the Russian Academy of Sciences. The Antarctic lakes were studied by the staff of the Institute of Lake Science of the Russian Academy of Sciences. Um, the St. Petersburg um, Russian Academy of Sciences scientists as part of the 70th Russian Antarctic expedition, which took place from February 6 to April 20, 2025. The scientists conducted research within the framework of the program geochemical and ecological features of organic matter transportation tra transformation processes in Antarctic lakes. The expedition arrived on the southernmost continent on the scientific expedition vessel of the Arctic and Antarctic Research Institute, Akademik Treshnikov. The vessel is named after the outstanding polar explorer, Doctor of Geographical Sciences, Alexei Treshnikov who from 1982 to 1988 was the director of the Institute of Lake Science. Um, the scientists uh, from the Russian Academy of Sciences, various institutes involved, uh, sincerely thank the leadership of the Russian Antarctic Expedition for the high level of logistical organization and assistance in carrying out the work, as well as all participating colleagues who helped in the field routes. Very, very interesting. Now, understand, please, that the Chinese scientists are as active in Antarctica as the Russians are. Something is going on, and uh, there is definitely intensive field research. I'm sure we don't know the uh, you know, exact goals of the expeditions, but they are filming, they are studying, they are touching, and they are analyzing. I'll keep my eyes open on the events that take place in the Antarctica, and of course in the Arctic. You can see videos in my channel about Antarctica, Russian Antarctica, for example, and follow the um, latest developments, Chinese too. If you... Uh, like my videos and can support my research, please do so through the description or final description to this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Make sure that you are 
notified when new idea, videos are coming up. Um, that's what I wanted to let you know today. Thank you for your attention.